Wait, more nerfs? Are you serious? It's true, Blizzard just announced nerfs to five more cards in Hearthstone. In this video, I'm going to take a look at how those nerfs will impact the wild metagame, as well as give my opinion on what cards I think need changing for a healthier format moving forward. Watch this! Hey everyone, it's Raffle, and today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual. Instead of Hearthstone highlights, I'm going to be taking a look at the recent balance changes that were just announced by Blizzard, and talking through how I think those might impact Wild. If you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for daily Wild Hearthstone highlights. Make sure you stick around to the end though, because I'm going to give my opinion on what cards I think need to be nerfed in the future to make Wild a better place. With that, let's get to the cards. First up, we have Cold Blood, which is having its cost increased by 1 mana, up to 2. Now this is a huge change because the major deck that ran this card was Odd Rogue, and obviously at 2 mana, Odd Rogue can no longer include Cold Blood. It's going to significantly reduce the amount of burst damage this deck is capable of, but I don't think it'll kill it off completely. It may shift some of the builds a little bit in Wild especially, where the real benefit of running Argent Horse Rider was the ability to Cold Blood it, so with that capacity reduced, you may see different cards coming in at the 3 mana slot, focusing on big beefy bodies and winning the board early, uh, say Shady Dealer coming back into Vogue. Overall, I think this is a good change. 1 mana for 4 damage was pretty powerful, but I'm afraid it might kill the card a bit too much because it just feels vastly inferior to Eviscerate, which doesn't have to be attached to a minion so it can go face for closing out games a little bit faster and more efficiently. When you compare this to Blessing of Might, which at 1 mana gives 3 damage, it seems like you're overpaying for the extra point of damage. I'm not certain that this nerf will kill the card, but it certainly feels like it. Next up we have Flame Tongue Totem. Like Cold Blood, Flame Tongue Totem is getting its cost increased by 1 mana. And like Cold Blood, this is going to have a huge impact on one of the most popular decks in the wild format, which is Even Shaman. Even Shaman really wants to get value out of the totems that it generates, and a big part of that is Flame Tongue Totem, which allows them to do 2 extra damage, as well as distribute that damage across the field as the minions begin to die. Taking this card out of Even Shaman is going to be a major major change for that deck. I think it'll still be a relevant force in the wild format, but it does significantly weaken it, which I believe is a good thing, given how long it's dominated as one of the best decks in the format. This does also prove to be an incidental nerf to one of the most powerful cards in the deck, which is Thing From Below, because you just now have one less means of reducing the cost of that card. Overall, I think this is a very good change, and personally the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Next up, we have Equality, which Blizzard didn't settle for a 1 mana nerf this time, they bumped it up to 4, doubling the mana cost of equality in the process. Now this is a huge nerf to a card that really has mostly seen utility play in some of the powerful wild decks. The most relevant deck that this nerf affects in wild is the aggro anything deck that we've been seeing lately. Now that deck only ran one copy of it, and it did seem to be underperforming a bit, so it may not be that big of a hit to the deck in general. In fact, they can probably just sneak in a Keeper of Voldemort in that spot instead, and still just be fine. What this really hurts though, is any Control Paladin variants. Now I was noticing several of those high on the Legend ladder, this was probably an influence from some of the standard players playing recently, but I was seeing a lot more OTK control paladins that really relied on the equality wild pyro clear as well as the equality consecrate clear and this is now coming out two turns later if you want those same synergies it's going to be a bit too slow in my opinion and I think the decks are going to have to lean heavily on shrink ray to see if they can get similar board clears Overall, I think that while the nerf was aggressive, it may have been necessary just because equality is certainly a powerful card, and something needed to be done even if it wasn't carrying decks in the wild format just yet. Next up, we have Hunter's Mark, which again, it's getting its cost increased by 1 mana. This is the second time this has actually happened, in fact, because Hunter's Mark actually used to cost 0 mana. So, like Caverns Below before it, it gets nerfed multiple times, and now has its cost set at 2. This is likely a change with Standard in mind, where Hunter is pretty dominant right now. A big part of that is not only this card and its combination with Candleshot and its ability to remove large threats, but also another card that we're going to be seeing coming up next, 
And I think that these Hunter changes were really targeting the standard audience and isn't going to have that big of an influence on Wild. Spell Hunter and Secret Hunter were both running Hunter's Mark just because of the synergy with Candleshot and Wild. I don't think it's going to be an auto-include anymore. You may still run the Candleshot because it's just a good card, but the fact that Hunter's Mark is costing an extra mana may make it less valuable and no longer an inclusion in some of those decks. In general, I'm pretty ambivalent about this change. I don't think it's going to have a huge influence on the wild ladder. And like I said before, it's probably targeted more towards standard. The final card being nerfed in this month's balance change is the Lesser Emerald Spellstone. Once again, it follows the trend of increasing its mana cost by one. This is another card that I think makes sense to nerf because at five mana, even unramped, getting a 6-6 six, six body is under pain. You even partially ramp up the spell stone to get three, or if you get a good draw and you have two secrets before turn five and you get four, this card just scales really well with the effect and is quite honestly pretty insane to get 12-12 worth of stats for five mana. I think at six mana, the card is still very good, but this nerf is really going to hurt Hunter and Wild, which, to be honest, this is one of its two power plays, aside from Deathstalker Rexar. Dropping the power level of two cards that were frequently run is certainly not going to help things for Rexar. So that's it for this wave of balance changes. Make sure to let me know how you feel about these changes in the comments below. And also don't forget to hold on to extra copies of Cold Blood, Equality, and Lesser Emerald Spellstone since you'll get the full dust refund for disenchanting those after the nerfs go live. Now though, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the cards that I think need to change in order for Wild to be a healthy format. Anytime we see a balance change in Hearthstone, the Wild community starts reigniting the discussion around Barnes, and rightfully so. This card has been problematic for quite some time, not only in Big Priest, but in other decks as well, and its ability to churn out huge threats in the early game far sooner than you should be able to. Yes, it presents an interesting deck building challenge in some cases, but I think the payoff is way too big for what the limitations of building your deck in that way are. Regardless, it creates way too swingy of games that just feel really bad to lose to, and I think that for the future of Wild, we need some change to this card. Next up is Void Caller. This is another 4-mana card that's frequently discussed when balance changes happen because of its ability to pull out huge demons, specifically the 9-mana demons in Void Lord and Malganus, each of which can just end the game on the spot. Now, once again, this is really frustrating to play against, and feels really bad to lose to, and creates archetypes that cheat out way too much mana way too frequently. I don't know what a good change is for this card, but I think doing something about it is certainly necessary. My next card is Thing From Below, which did get an incidental nerf with the Flame Tongue Totem change, but I think more could be done to reduce the power of this card, and consequently even Shaman. This is another really swingy card that feels like you can't really do much about it when the opponent plays it, or, god forbid, two in the same turn. I know it may kill even Shaman almost completely, but I think increasing the cost of this card to seven mana would be a worthwhile change to take it out of that deck. If that's a bit too aggressive, even going to eight mana would make it playable, but at least slow down the swing turn that it creates. The final set of cards that I would like to see changed are actually a package deal, and that's Gen and Baku. I think in Standard especially, we're going to see just how powerful these cards are. When there are a limited set of cards available to those players, they're really going to be able to lean on those buffed or reduced cost hero powers in order to carry them. Now, in Wild, you have a larger card pool, which creates a different problem, where you have more redundancy, so again, that deck building challenge isn't really that high of a cost compared to the payoff of an even or odd deck. I think for the past three or four VS reports, odd and even decks have really dominated the meta reports, proving that those Baku Gen effects happening at the start of game are just too powerful, and I don't see that changing anytime soon unless the cards themselves change. Well, that's it from me. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any cards that you want to see nerfed, Make sure to let me know in the comments below, and if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe for daily Wild Hearthstone highlights.